All right, so again, if you're at home, just kind of sit tight here. You can try and follow along as best as you can, but I'll get you the video when we're done here. All right. So here's coordinate space, kind of on a two-dimensional screen here. You can kind of see you've got the, the gray plane there is your XY plane, and then you've got this third axis, the Z axis, which is in blue there. Okay. Now, from our perspective, we're, we're graphing in 3D, but on a 2D piece of paper. So this is kind of the orientation that we would um, typically use in a math setting. And it's a little bit different than what you might expect. Okay. So notice you've got your horizontal axis is now the Y axis. And then this diagonal here is your X axis. The vertical is Z, which is a little bit different than what we're used to. Obviously, we're used to left and right being X, and then up and down being Y. Okay? So this is a different orientation than what we're used to. When we're graphing in the XY plane, the way this is set up, it's like, it's like all along when we've been graphing in the coordinate plane, if my fist is my head, the top of my fist is my the top of my head, and then my wrist is my neck. And it's like we've been looking down into this XY plane all along. Does that make sense? So, like, if, if you're thinking of it that way, this is up and down, this is left and right. Okay, so that's kind of the orientation we're in. Now, on a 2D screen or 2D piece of paper, the X-axis, it looks like it's heading up and down at an angle. But really what's happening is the X is coming forward at you and backward, okay? So we're going to say that the X axis controls forward movement. Forward would mean you're moving in the positive X direction and then backward movement which would be in the negative direction. The y-axis controls left and right, so right would be positive, left would be negative. And the z-axis controls up and down. Up is positive, down is negative. Okay, so we can, uh, let's, let's label which is the positive and the negative direction on the graph here. So this is the positive side of the x-axis. Back here is the negative side. Positive side of the y, negative side. Positive side of the z, negative side. And notice all three axes, they're still intersecting to uh, form a point called the origin, okay? All right, so go to example one here. So in coordinate space, points are graphed using ordered triples of the form x, y, z. So in coordinate plane, we have ordered pairs, x, y. Now we have ordered triples, x, y, z, okay? Let me give you a nice illustration of this. All right, so here's, here's another visualization of coordinate space. And I have it positioned the same way we would on paper, okay? Let's say I wanted to plot the point 3, 2, 1. X is 3, Y is 2, Z is 1. So from the origin, I'm going to move 3 units forward. I'm going to move 2 units right. And I'm going to move 1 unit up. 
So that would be the location of the point. See how it's one unit above the xy plane that we've been used to graphing. Okay. Now, the tricky part on graphing a 3D point like this on a 2D screen or 2D piece of paper is if, if you don't have any kind of bearings on it as to like how it's positioned in relationship to the origin, if all you do is plot the point itself, it's going to look like it's floating in the middle of nowhere, okay? So that makes it kind of challenging for us to graph on paper, all right? So what we do oftentimes is we draw a three-dimensional box associated with the point, and it helps us give perspective as to where in coordinate space the point is actually located, okay? So if you notice over on the left-hand side here, that point is um, it's to the left of the x-axis and then it's behind the y-axis. I can only tell that because of the orientation of the box. If the box weren't there, I wouldn't be able to tell that that point is behind the y-axis. Okay? So we just want to give the coordinates of the point that's shown within the box. And it's really simple. Just find the corners of the box that intersect each axis. So on the x-axis, see how the one corner is back here? That means you have a x-coordinate of negative 3. The box touches the y-axis at this corner right here. That's also a y-coordinate of negative 3. And then you've got this corner of the box touching the z-axis right there at positive 3. So again, if you were if you were trying to plot this point from the origin, you would be going 3 back, 3 left, and then 3 up to get there. Okay? All right, so for the second point, what do you think the x coordinate is? Positive 4, right? It's right up here. How about the y coordinate? 3. And the z coordinate? So we're intersecting the z axis right there. I'd call that 5, wouldn't you? 4, 3, 5. Okay, so again, from the origin, you're moving 4 forward. Then from there, you're going 3 to the right. And finally, 5 up to get to that point. Okay? So now, let's try to plot one ourselves. And this is the most challenging part of the lesson. You're going to graph the point. But in doing so, you have to draw the box associated with the point. So we have perspective, okay? So in order to draw the box, we're going to plot a point for every corner of the box. And you're going to see that the last point that finishes off the shape of the box, that's the point we're actually trying to plot, okay? So... One point or one corner of the box should always be the origin. So that's 0, 0, 0. Okay. Then the next three points that I'm going to plot, these are all going to be taking the point of negative 3, uh, 3, negative 4, and making two of the three coordinates zeros. So what I mean by that is, let's make the y and the z coordinate 0, so that I just end up with negative 3, 0, 0. And that point would be back here. And right, right there, I have 
two points that I can connect with a line segment, and that gives me one edge of the box. Okay? Then I'm going to plot negative, actually let's do 0, 3, 0. So now I made the x and the z zeros, and I kept the y a 3. That would be a point right here on the y-axis. And then connect with the origin. There's another edge of the box. And then we'll do 0, 0, negative 4. So that's going to be down here on the z-axis and connect with the origin. So for some of you, that might be enough, those four points, to finish off the box. Just depends on how, I guess, how, how good you are at drawing a three-dimensional box, okay? Let's continue, though, plotting the rest of the corners of the box, okay? So I've made all of the possible combinations where two of the three coordinates are zeros, right? Now I'm going to make all the possible combinations where one of the three is a zero, so let's do negative 3, 3, 0. So that means from the origin, you'd move 3 back, and then you'd move 3 right. And here's where it gets tricky. Watch the screen. So when I move 3 back, it just puts me right here, doesn't it? And then from that point, I have to move 3 to the right. And I'm going to place that point a little further out than what it appears 3 is on the y-axis. So that when I connect that point with the point that's on the y-axis, see how that line segment is parallel to the x-axis? And then I can also connect these two as well. So what you're looking at now, that's the top of the box. Okay, then let's do negative 3, 0, negative 4. So from the origin, you're going to move 3 back. Again, that places you right here. And then from that point, you're going to move 4 down. Now, you're not going to go all the way down to right here. Don't place it that low. It actually needs to be a little bit higher needs to be like right around there so that when you connect that point with the z-axis, again, that edge is parallel to the x-axis. And then I connect that point also with the x-axis, and now I have the left side of the box. Okay, and then one final point to plot before we get the point we're actually after. 0, 3, negative 4. So that's from the origin, 3 right, which places me right here, and then 4 down. Connect with the y-axis, connect with the z-axis. And that gives you the front face of the box, right? Now see, you're only missing one final corner of the box, right? That's the point that you're after, and it should be positioned right about, right about there. Make sure, change the color on it or put a star next to it so we know that that's the point we're trying to find or trying to plot. And just verify with your movement from the origin. So if I started at the origin, I went three back, three right, and then four down. Seems reasonable, right?
One thing I can't stress enough, every edge of the box has to be parallel to an axis. Every edge of the box has to be parallel to an axis. Otherwise, something's wrong. Okay? Let's do another one. So we're plotting negative 3, negative 4, 2. Start with the origin. And let's do negative 3, 0, 0. This is back here. Connect. Let's do 0, negative 4, 0. This is over here. And let's do 0, 0, 2, which is up here. Those should, those should be the four easy points. Next, I'll do negative 3, negative 4, 0. This is one of the tougher ones to get. So you're going to move 3 back, which again puts you right here. And from that point, you're going to move 4 left, which I'd place right about there. So when I connect it with the y-axis point, I am parallel to the x-axis. And then also connect it back to the x. So that's the bottom of the box. Then let's do negative 3, 0, 2. So that is 3 back and 2 up. Place it right about there. And then finally, 0, negative 4, 2. So that's 4 left and 2 up. Let me move. i got to get this stuff out of the way. So we're going to place that right about there. Connect with the y-axis point and the z-axis point. Now you got the front face of your box. And then the final point we're after is going to have to be right about there. And once again, check it from the origin. Go three back, four left, two up. Any questions on that? You don't have to be perfect, just kind of in the right ballpark. These can be these can be a little tricky to graph for sure. Okay, so just do your best with them. I think you guys will be fine. All right, that's the tough part. Now let's go to planes in space. Okay, so when you're in 2D, the xy plane, if you have the equation 3x minus 2y equals 6, that graphs to be a line, doesn't it? It's a linear equation. Let's say we take that equation and we bring in a 2z. So now it's 3x minus 2y plus 2z equals 6. By bringing the third variable in, you're now in three dimensions, and it's going to graph to be a plane. Okay, now let me give you a vi visual illustration of that. So notice you have over in the... the Top left of this box, you have 3x minus 2y plus 2z equals 6. And here's kind of a view of that plane positioned in coordinate space. Okay? 
Now, when we graph these ourselves, ours is going to look, look a little bit different, okay? Here, the plane is in this blue, like, parallelogram view, right? And that's typically in, like, your geometry courses. That's how you represent planes, right, as, like, parallelograms in a sense. Ours are going to look a little different. They're going to look more like triangular regions when we graph them, okay? So that's what I have on the screen here. We can graph the planes by drawing in what are called trace lines. Each one of those red lines is a trace line. And here's all it is. It's a line that passes through two of the three axes in coordinate space. A line that passes through two of the three axes in coordinate space. Think of a trace line, it's an extension of an X or Y intercept. So you think an X intercept is a point that's on the X axis where Y is zero, right? A trace line is a line that goes through X and Y axes, and that means Z has to be zero. Okay? <clears throat> All right, move to example three, and let's graph one of these ourselves. These are actually really easy to do. Graph the plane 2X minus Y plus 3Z equals 6, and write the equation of each trace line. So the first thing you're going to do to graph these is you're going to find the intercepts. If you want an x-intercept in coordinate space, you do the same thing as when you were in the coordinate plane. If you're a point on the x-axis, that means your y and your z are both zero. So you're just going to make y and z replace those with zero in the equation, and that would leave you with 2x equals 6, right? So that means x would equal 3. So plot that point on the x-axis. If you want a y-intercept, make x and z both zero. So that would leave you with negative y equals 6, or y equals negative 6. And that's going to be, you got to go a little bit off your graph right out there. And then for a z-intercept, make x and y both 0 in your equation. That will give you 3z equals 6, or z equals 2. All right now, once you plot those three points, here's all you got to do draw a line through those two. That is known as the YZ trace. It's going through the Y intercept and the Z intercept. Then draw a line through these two. That's the XZ trace. And then draw a line through these two. That's your x, y trace. And we're going to shade this in. The shading represents all the ordered triples of the plane that would make the equation true. Any questions on that? All right, now, as far as equations for the trace lines, they're, they're linear equations, okay? So if you want the x, y trace, just make z zero in the equation. Two x minus y equals six. If you want the x, z trace, make y zero in the equation. 2x plus 3z would equal 6. 
And if you want the yz trace, make x zero in the original equation. That would leave you with negative y plus uh, 3z equals 6. Now notice um, xy and xz traces, those are both in standard form. yz trace as is, it's not in standard form completely. I got to divide everything by a negative 1. So there's your complete standard form for the yz trace. These you can leave as is. Any questions on that? Okay, so for homework, there's a worksheet in your uh, handout for practice on this. Let's pull that up, make sure we're good with everything. Okay, so first four problems. Describe the location of each point in relation to the origin. So let's do number one together. Uh, if I have the point one, negative three, negative one. In relationship to the origin, the x value of 1 means move 1 unit which way? One forward. So we're going to say 1 forward. Negative 3 for y means 3 left. And negative 1 for z means 1 down. That's all they're looking for in that section. Okay? 5 and 6, you got the, the point plotted with the box already drawn. Give the coordinates of it. That should be pretty quick. 7 through 10, you're plotting the points themselves. You got to draw the box to go along with the point. 11 and 12, find the intercepts for each plane, meaning find the x, the y, the z intercepts. That should be pretty quick. And then 13 through 16, you've got four equations of planes. You're going to find the intercepts for each equation, plot those, draw your trace lines to sketch the plane, and please don't forget to do this. Write the equation of each trace line. Questions on that? Okay. I'm going to stop mirroring here. Oh. Kayla, you're shaking your head yes. Okay. So we're to a point now, we're going to take your quiz. There's about 40 minutes left in class. We'll take the quiz. Um, if everybody from home, I need you to kind of angle your camera so I can see you working. When you're done with your quiz, start working on that uh, 3D worksheet. Okay, that's your homework. While you guys are taking the quiz, I will try to get this video uploaded.